now, it's time for the Brad LaFrette Show Interview of the Week. Brad LaFrette here. I just want to take a moment and thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all your continued support. Before I get into my conversation with e- former Iowa State and NFL tight end EJ Bibbs, I want to give you a peek behind the curtain. And tonight I recorded my conversation with EJ and I experienced a little bit of technical difficulties. So the last few minutes of my conversation with EJ, I had to cut off. But hopefully I will be able to have him back on down the road closer to uh, kickoff to the season on September 4th, where Iowa State takes on Northern Iowa. So we covered a lot of ground tonight. It was a great conversation. Make sure that you follow EJ on Twitter and Instagram, and that is at EJ Bibbs GLA. With no further ado, here's my conversation with EJ Bibbs. Welcome to another installment of the Brad LaFrat Show. I'm Brad LaFrat, and I'm honored to have my guest this week. He is... I have a list of notes here of accolades that my guest has, so hang with me. He is a 2013 Dury Moss Outstanding Newcomer Award winner. He is a 2014 All Big 12 First Team. That is unanimous. It's AP and coaches. A 2014 College Sports Madness Third Team All-American. A 2014 John Mackey Award Semifinals. A 2014 Pete Taylor MVP Award winner and a 2015 Senior Bowl participant. He is none other than former Iowa State tight end and NFL tight end, EJ Big. That's an impressive list there. Thank you very much for hopping on and joining me this week. I really appreciate it. No problem. So I guess let's just get started. You grew up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Were you a Bears fan growing up? Oh, uh, back in those days, it was, it was good football at them times. Right now, it, it coming up right now, so I'm coming back up on um, Bears fan right now. Yeah. My wife is a big Bears fan, and it doesn't hurt to have David Montgomery there. Oh, absolutely. My I'm man's over there. Back. Uh, yeah. I definitely, uh, David's one of my favorite Cyclones, so uh, having him in Chicago. I'm not really an NFL for – I'm more – it's Iowa State and college football – but uh, David being there now and the likes of Alan Lazard and Green Bay and some, you know. It's a good football scene. to watch on Sunday, man. <laughs> yeah, and the NFL scene, uh, Cyclones in the NFL is becoming more and more prevalent um, over the last few years. So I've taken more of an interest in the NFL, uh, like I said, over the last few years. And David being in Chicago doesn't hurt things. No, no, no. I was, um, I got the chance to see him um uh, I think his sophomore junior year I came back uh to see the school and I ended up talking to him but you know it's crazy that he ended up in Chicago so it's um, pretty um pretty cool to see that he's there is that where you're currently uh located in Chicago no I'm currently uh, located in Miami Miami yeah, yeah what let's so let's let's take a step back you growing up at uh in the Chicago area you went to high school is it Bag what's your high school name was Bogan it- Bogan, yeah, you you played wide receiver and and linebacker in high school. What uh, what was that experience like playing on both sides of the ball? And and how did you get to the point where was it you being recruited as a tight end? How how did you uh, <clears throat> kind of decide on playing the tight end position in college? Um, you know, when I first started playing, um, I actually was playing um, running back at the time as a in Park Warner in the, those times. And uh, once I got to high school, I started to develop, you know, that, that height. And uh, my coach was like, hey, man, let's put, you, put your receiver see how you do. I said, all right, fine. And I remember uh, my freshman year of uh, high school, I uh, went out there and my coach was like, man, you look super big. Like, you should play varsity. I was like, nah, nah, nah. So he ended up putting me on this route. Ran this slant route, and I ended up dropping it. He said, no, go down to the freshmen and sophomores. You know, you have a good time, you know. And I was just, like, a very humble experience right there for me as a, you know, just starting up to high school and getting that mix of, you know, the embarrassment. And it was kind of, um, you know, just a a clear eye, you know, just opening up a lot of things for me. 
And um, I, I played that position all the way through my senior year, uh, receiver, a little bit of a lot of back and back and forth. And uh, once I got to college, they were just telling me, hey, you need to play tight end. You would be a way better uh, football player. And I just wasn't having it at, at the time. And, uh, you know, eventually, you know, I sat down and went through the film and actually trying to understand how to play um, tight end. And it, it was beneficial for me. Did you originally commit to the University of Iowa? Yeah. That's, uh, that's under, under grounds right there, man. I um, actually went there just for a semester and uh, ended up going to Chippewa for that. Then you, what was it that, uh, was it not a good fit, uh, timing? What was it there that? Uh, I think um, that, that have, everything happened for a reason. Uh, I was there and I, I just, me, back in that time, I, my head wasn't straight on um, just being that D1 athlete at the time. I had too much of things going on in my life where I was trying to figure out who I was as a person. So um, it was a very humble experience for me to um, go through that process in Iowa and um, going to JUCO for those two years in Arizona Western. Uh, and then I, I actually learned how to play tight end there. So um, it was better. It was, it's a good, you know, just career that way. You uh, would go on to uh, transfer to Arizona Western uh, Community College in Arizona where you had a great year before coming to Iowa State. What did that – I um, personally, I had a – I have a – my boss – I went to uh, Eastern Arizona, so really? <laughs> I know I have some connections down there, and they there's a lot of good football to be played down there. What was that experience like for you, kind of coming from, you know, a Power Five program, then stepping in, taking a step back? You mentioned well, uh, some personal uh, finding yourself. What yeah, it's you? that that was a whole uh, different element there, man. It was uh, hot, and, and then just seeing the palm trees and. Just being away from home, and that and that really got to me. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna be able to uh, play football. And once I got there, I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, just being in, in in that environment that I'm not used to, uh, no family, no friends, and just trying to get that bond. So it took me a while to just get comfortable and set in my freshman year, and it was just very difficult for me because uh, I used to call my dad a lot and, and ask my dad questions like. Uh, just basically, hey, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, you know what I mean? And like my desire of playing football, it wasn't there, you know, and I was just trying to figure out like, who I was and trying to see, hey, can I play tight end? And then like, you know, trying to still play receiver and trying to run. And I started seeing how how much faster guys was, and how much shorter, and then they, the body, you know, uh, typical for receiver. So I was being hard at the time trying to play receiver that semester. My coach said, hey, look, you're going to play fullback. And I was just like, no. I'm a, I told my dad that day, I said, hey, man, give me a plane ticket. I want to come home. I just found me a job like that. And he was like, let's listen to the coach and see how it feels. Went into the next day, played tight end. And I, I just realized how fast I was on the field. And I was just like, man, this is crazy. Like, this is way easier than playing receiver. Like, you know, but at the same time, it was, it was a very learned like, process too, blocking, you know, and just learning how to, like a six technique and just, you know, just football talk, you know, and playing tight end. You would continue uh, after that experience to have offers on the table from um, the Oklahomas, the Nebraskas, the Kansas States of the world. What was it about Iowa State and who was it, uh, who was on your recruitment process from Iowa State? What made, what, what made you make the decision to come to Ames? Well, like, uh, originally I was sitting there, uh, just debating on which school I wanted to go to. I had so many offers I was just like thinking and then I narrowed it down to the first, the last two I was thinking on top of my head that I really like, like some Oklahoma call is like no brainer, I'm going to Oklahoma. Like that was the big one I was just like, yeah. And then I actually started thinking about my career, how, how I'm gonna play there. Like, what is my stats gonna be? You, you know, like quarterback situation. And, you know, um, during that whole process, I think I had uh, the coach name was Coach Wells. He was there. I don't know if you know him. He was there uh, with that process, and I met Coach Rose. And Coach Rose, he was he was a phenomenal coach. Uh, he helped me out through that whole process, my sophomore, and junior, senior year. Like it was it was awesome, you know. And so, um, just looking back at that, I, I was sitting in my room just thinking about, man, I should go to Oklahoma, I should go to Oklahoma. And then something just clicked. My parents said, man, you should go. You should play Iowa State. It's, it's close to us. And that really what it came down to was being my parent, my parents being able to come. It's straight to like a straight like four or five hour like, drive to Iowa. So um, that was really was a nail biter on that one. 
What was it like playing for Coach Rhodes? As a fan from afar, he's someone that really clicked with Iowa State. The attendance uh, grew uh, tenfold during his uh, tenure at Iowa State. Um, the passion was, he, he was able to connect with his Iowa ties. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out the way everybody would have liked, but he definitely was another building block to, you know, to the Fiesta Bowl championship last year that the team experienced in 2020. Yeah. He was definitely a big part of that process. What was it like playing for Coach Rhodes? He's an awesome guy. Um, he, 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 was, uh, he was a lot different from a lot of coaches I've been around. Players coach, you know, just want to sit down and talk to you, get to understand you, who you were as a person. And, that, and when he, I think during my recovery process, uh, me getting hurt, and that's when I really like, was starting to understand Coach Rose my senior year. And I remember the conversation we had before I got to Iowa State. He was telling about, like, uh, once you commit, like, that's, you know, right in the dot. Like, you, you know what I mean? You give me your word. And, you know, your word to me is everything. Uh, you call me EJ. And that took me a long ways because, you know, just talking to somebody and just speaking the truth. And that's what he was telling me. Just speak the truth and, like, you know, come in here. Just don't be around the bush. If you don't want to be here, just say that. You don't want to be here. But that's when I was like, yeah, I want to be here. And that's when to be Oklahoma. But... <laughs> Eventually, that didn't work out for me. But my main goal was coming to Iowa State is was to be Iowa because I was just so uh, a hard head of like, man, I can beat them. I couldn't play there. Like I was just wanting to beat that, you know, that goal, that goal I had in my uh, my freshman year. But uh, Coach Rose, like back to you, Sam. Coach Rose, he was awesome, man. He's a great coach. I gotta ask. I can't. I'm a little blurry on the game. I think it was either 2000. I believe the year was two. I was trying to go through my research. I had a question on Twitter for you. And it was based on um, you did a military salute after catching a touchdown. I think it was in 2013 mm -hmm. against Texas Tech. I believe it was Tech or TCU, and you got flagged for it. Do you, my uh, what do you? Uh, first of all, this is a two-part question. What do you think about how the game has changed, especially at the professional level? There's more of an opportunity to it's express so yourself. Uh, yeah. But also, number two, did you come – are you from a military family? Yeah, my grandpa was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it was basically – when I used to do that, it was just basically saluting and just to give that respect, you know, just playing football, you know, on that, what, Saturday. It was just uh, a great honor to, like, do that, you know, at the time. So I was just like, hey, I think my grandpa probably passed away, like, two years ago after that, and, you know, before that time. So I was just like, man, this, this is what I want to do after my score touchdown. I want to salute my grandpa and salute the veterans. Awesome. That's uh, great stuff, man. Um, some of the other uh, memories that stick out to me, you had great games against TCU in the past, uh, in 14, I believe, then uh, game, touchdowns against Texas down there in Austin, then some other. Uh, Texas, man, that was, that was a great game, man. Great game. Um, I, just, I, I'm trying to go through, retry, re go through all my memory of highlights of mm -hmm. you and watching some tape here recently. Do you have any, um, Great. I, I know one game uh, we didn't didn't pull out a victory, but it was in 2000. Um, I want to say four. It was against Iowa when it was either 13. I think it was 13. We were uh, where mm -hmm. or the throwback jacket. The throwbacks. Yeah. Yeah. You had late mm -hmm. in the game. We're trying to come back. Sam threw you a great ball, and you went up and got it. Um, what uh, What are some of your favorite memories as a Cyclone? Uh, I would have to say. I got a couple actually. I would have to say um, any of uh, that cold game against Kansas. That was a fun game. Uh, I mean, not really, but it was just that experience being out there in that, that type of temperature. Uh, that blew my mind. Um, I really loved the game uh, against uh, Texas when we was there at Texas. And uh, that game to me, man, hit me. Uh, I remember that, that, that drive and going down to uh, score. And I made a couple of big catches, but before we went onto the field, I remember, like, I think it was like maybe five, maybe three minutes up on the clock. And I was looking at the office alignment because we was getting ready because they kicked the field goal. And I was like, yeah, I think, I think we about to go down and go make, you know, make this drive happen. And then it was so heartbreaking when, uh, you know, towards the end of the game, we, we ended up scoring. I think, uh, I think I made a route to call it in the end zone and I scored. And that to me, man, it just, I can remember it out back in my head right now. Like, you know, this, the fans and everybody screaming. And it was just like, 
oh, that game was awesome. But you know, we ended up losing that game. But that was that was my career, man. We were just trying to figure out, you know, the cyclones. Like you're trying to figure out the I'll win a W. So that's it was a whole bunch of coaching errors and you know stuff that you know behind the doors, you know. What do you – you were the main feature at tight end position during uh, – along with – I think Colin Franklin was there as well. But now – No, he, he left. He, I mean, he was a year and he left. You know, I was there uh, – After? The year him? before him. I mean, after him, yeah. Him. Okay. But you were the main feature there at the tight end position. What – how have you seen um, that position evolve under Coach, Mc, Coach Campbell – with Coach Campbell, huh? With it's 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 um it's different now. You know, when we was running it, like uh, Coach Campbell, he's making it with 13 personnel. I don't know if you know what 13 is. Yeah. He got 13, 12, he mixing it in. You know, he put a lot of tight ends on the field to, you know, manipulate the defense and you know, put them in situations where they felt uncomfortable. But uh, you know, when I was playing, it was more just me playing the wide tight end. And I mean, I really didn't like that at all, you know, when I was playing there. Cause like I don't know if you know Ernst, he was there. Uh Ernst, you know remember Ernst? Yep. He was there uh, my uh, junior, his senior, and I was just like, me and him about to go crazy, you know? And I was just like, bro, you, you look just like me when we run, but, like, he was he was powerful, he was stronger than me, but he made me understand, hey, this is what you got to do to play tight end, bro, you got to block. I know you want to catch me, Jack, but, hey, bro, you got to block. And I was just like, man, okay, I understand, but he, he took me underneath his, his arms and, like, telling me what all I have to do, and it, it sucked that he was getting, he got hurt his senior year. I don't know, you know that, right? He got hurt his year, that um, his senior year, so that put a lot on me to play um, really fast, you know. And uh, my senior year, it just everything just clicked, you know, with everything he was saying. And uh, I can't remember my coach, uh, name, my junior year. What was his name? Coach Ball, I think. Uh, what was his name? What was his name? I can't, I can't remember his name right now. But, you know, it, it, was just, it was a great experience. After your time at Iowa State, you would go on to uh, sign with a the Cleveland Browns as a rookie and play in seven games. What was – your thought process going into your rookie season and how have and then you would also go on from there to sign and have short stints with the Jacksonville Jaguars I think you were there for a year then with uh, the Washington with Redskins. DC yeah and then Bro, uh, you know uh, my 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 path is it was awesome it was it was crazy now I do it all over again uh, the phone call I got before the draft the last pick of the draft, knowing everything that would happen, you know, just putting me in a different uh, mindset to get myself ready to make a team and make a, get a job, basically. And I'm glad I'm glad I didn't get drafted, you know. Uh, uh, deep down inside, you know, that little kid, you know, wishing and hoping, like, hey, I wish I would have got drafted. But at the same time, everything worked out for me. And I couldn't ask, you know, anything else. Like, you know, if you ask me over and over and over, would I do it over? I'm going to tell you, yes. And, you know, going through uh, that three-day trial with the Cleveland Browns, that was literally awesome. And, you know, just trying to prove to prove to myself and to other people that, hey, look, I belong at the spot of tight end. And, you know, everybody's like, you look shorter than, you know, most tight ends, but that would made me so different, you know. Uh, it was more about, hey, I'm going to catch a ball on you no matter what you where, where, where your body position is, you know, I don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm gonna go over your head. I'm gonna catch it, and that's that was me. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be that guy, and just you know, playing in those season. I remember my first game against uh, Cincinnati, where uh, I was nervous because that whole season I'm, I'm with Johnny, and I'm with Josh McCown and Gary Barnett and, and like all those. It was like a whole bunch of older guys: Dwayne Bow, Brian Hartline, and you know. Andrew Hawkins, I can I go on and on and on, you know, on that offense. And I was sitting there and just, we played the Jets my first game. And I was just sitting there like, I want to play. Like, why am I playing? I was inactive. And, and you're just like, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to play. Um, I think week seven, coach said, they finally sat me down. And we was watching um, film on that Tuesday. You know, that Monday, I mean, you know, the coach put up a play that was called, uh, it was 12 Cyclone as a person now. And it's basically stick nine. And um, I was looking, I'm like, oh, this might this might be a good place with Gary. And I'm just sitting there, you know, writing it down in the meeting room. And um, everybody was looking at me while I'm writing this down. And everybody started clapping. 
You know, because it finally happened. And I'm like, man, I'm finally about to play on, on Thursday night football. You understand? Like, this is this is about to happen. And uh, when I went on the field, I remember so much adrenaline, uh, so much uh, passion. But I think I was going against James Harrison. Uh, that was his, like, one year he played at Cincinnati. But I was so scared and terrified because he had the black visor on. Super swole, baby oil on the arms. <laughs> and I was sitting there just like, Lord, just let me get through this play. You know, and it, the play happened so fast. And after that play, I was just like, man, I finally made it. You know, it was a, a great, great time in Cleveland. The fans there are unbelievable. And, you know, when going to Jacksonville from Cleveland, it was, it was beautiful. You know, it was a different, different vibe playing with Gus. Do you, and, see, uh, uh, do you see any similarities to – the Cleveland fan base and to the Iowa State fan base and just the- hey, you know what that is that is crazy. I was just talking about that maybe a year ago to one of my home and I was like, bro, me going to Cleveland to uh, me going to like, Iowa State to Cleveland, beautiful. It was awesome. Like it was like same, you know, high energy. The guys will still love you. The people still love you. Come support you no matter the cold games. You know, what I mean that's that was that was that was it. <laughs> that was that was. <laughs> So great you said that, man. <laughs> now they're both both uh, organizations, I guess you could say, are having success at a higher rate than they've had in a long time. So it's beautiful. Lots of great things happening in both uh, both places. You yeah, it's know, beautiful, man. I, it's it's awesome. You would go on to Jacksonville, Washington D.C. to play for the Washington Redskins at the time. Now the Washington Football Team. Do you have any mm-hmm. thoughts on those experiences that you can? Um, yeah, man, Jacksonville was awesome. Um, a lot of things was going on, head coaching job. I've always been in the situation where losing programs, and I'm not trying to, you know, bash any programs at all. It was just, that's, that's, the, that's the business of it, you know, and, and it sucks to you as a player because it's, excuse me, it's so hard to have success, you know, because if you don't play well that day, that game, it doesn't matter because they always think about the next guy. You know, because they try to rebuild and rebuild and rebuild fast and win now. So playing in Jacksonville for that, that year was awesome. And then uh, they wanted to, you know, have a different role. I don't, I don't know what it was. I did everything in my power to stay on the team. And, you know, I, I still to this day don't know why I got, you know, cut that year. And uh, going to D.C., it was different. You know, good, I'm good buddies with Jay Reed. I get the chance to uh, meet up with, uh, with Vernon Davis at the time. He was there. So it was a it was a great locker room. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I grew up watching Vernon Davis. And J Reed was the best tight end like in that year. And uh Niles Paul was a really good tight end. So it was it was a great time in those years. Most recently the XFL uh tried to make a second comeback or a second stint uh as an organization. You were drafted by the New York team. Unfortunately, uh, the world came to an end with COVID-19 and things shut down. Warrior, uh, do you have any, do you just, were you uh, really looking forward to that opportunity? How, and will that uh, present itself again? I, you know what, that, that you know, um, going, getting drafted to the XFL was, it was like, oh, okay, this, this is where it's high supposed to feel. So, it was different in, in, in so many ways, but at that time when I got hurt from D.C. and that gap of going to the XFL, like I was dealing with so many body and mind stuff. Like, you know, so I, I needed to take that time, you know? You know what I'm saying? So I lost my sister at that time, and I was just like, look, I gave football everything. So let me let me let me slide back. Let me do what I need to do for my family and for me as a man. So it, it was crazy, but when I got to Exeter, it, it was a beautiful time in New York. Uh, we get the we had the chance to play on the on the, on the field there. You know, you know, it, it was it was awesome, man. Like I, I couldn't even couldn't go back and just I can go back and all the time and just think about it. It was it was a beautiful time. First, my condolences uh, in regards to your sister. Um, I appreciate you sharing that and being honest. Um, Second, what was that? What exactly did that XFL draft process look like? Is that like the NFLs? What did that look like? Did you get a? No, nah, it's it was, it was. I don't know. Uh, to be honest with you, it was just you know, I couldn't. It was, I don't know. 
Yeah, it, it didn't feel like the draft where, you know, you got there, you got paid more. It wasn't like that. Uh, it wasn't like, hey, take a picture, you do draft class. Like, it was nothing, nothing like that. It was just like, hey, these are guys that we want on the team. And that's it. You know, it, I got a call from Seattle at the same time New York was calling me. You know, I was just like, you, you, you just don't know, you know, where you was going. But it, it was a good time to get drafted and you hear your name, make a call. And, you know, it wasn't nothing like it was on ESPN or anything. It, it was cool. It was a good time. Looking back at your entire body work, your career in football, what has been the best advice that you received from someone inside the bit inside the business? Because it is a business at the end of the day. And what is the best advice you received outside of the of the locker room? You know, um, it's so it's so many things I can I can say to you, bro. Uh, it just you know just being being there for someone through the hard times. So when I'm at the backup situation when I first got to Cleveland and just learning how to play your role and being humble. I was not, at the time, I was like, man, I'm better than all these people. It was just like, take a back seat, bro, get a spotlight to somebody else. And uh, at the time, I was with Gary. He's having a great year. And I was like, bro, let me stop being a hater and help him, you know? So let me grab the playbook. Let me grab the, the, the iPad and go through the film. Like, bro, I see this, bro. This might be open. So... You know, once you settle down and get to know yourself and play your role, I think that was one of the biggest things that I learned is that people, it's going to be a lot of ugly people out in the world, and you have to move around that, you know, and, and always stay straight. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, just keep in a straight head. Don't do anything you go through in, in football. Just make sure you're just being happy and being happy and loving what you're doing right now, you know? That's some great advice. Speaking of the ugly side of society, I have to ask, as a Black American, African American athlete like yourself, what yeah. has this past year, what has it been like for you, in the, um, and where can we go as a society to make this a better home for everybody? Not, you know only, what? not only inside of the, the world of sports, but in general, out in our everyday life. Just having respect, you know, that's, and, that's, and that's very, that's, that's true, that's blunt, I'm being real with you, you know, just being respectful, you know, and, and I, I can't get into all that other stuff because, you know, it just, it is what it is, you see it every day, you, you know what's going on in the world, so it just, it's just time for a lot of people to wake up and understand that, you know, just have respect for people and treat people with respect. It's hard for me personally because my wife is biracial, she's African American and Caucasian, white okay. and it's really hard because she is a um a healthcare professional and she has patients Absolutely. and she's too white for some people and too black for other people and it's really, <laughs> that's actually kind of cool <laughs> it's really disheartening to me to hear that we still think this way some people whether it's in yeah or it's, it's sad man it, it's still it's, sad. it's hard and hopefully yeah especially like i'm talking about like Football, when, when I was playing, it was, it was still a little different, too. You know, it, it, it still goes on, and then hopefully, you know, it gets better. You know, I, I pray and hope that it does, you know. Absolutely. In my quest of a million questions for EJ, I have to ask, what are your thoughts uh, on the name, image, likeness that's been brought up? And it looks like it's going to go forward where athletes, college athletes, collegiate athletes can um, – can profit or I'm not sure how they explain it, but profit or on their name and in image likeness, whether that's through uh, endorsements or social media deals. What are your thoughts on, on this? And would you, are you for it uh, for athletes getting paid? And because I think it's overdue personally, I think that a scholarship is, yes, it is a form. It is that step, but I think a lot of athletes, they can't go work. They can't do other things. They can't buy presents for their parents because they can't go work and earn money. What are your thoughts on this moving forward? I, I'm me. It's bro. Like I guess that's such a tough question because it just I don't know, man. That's that's what I'm saying. Like you can sit here and beat a dead horse right now. I, I don't know. Like it's so hard to say, man. We need to get paid more. I mean, dude, like. Did I play a heck of a career? Like, 
junior team, yes. Would I would like to get paid, yes. But I don't know. I don't. I just I can, I don't know that answer. You know, I, I just don't know that answer. That's fair enough. Um, I personally, as a fan, and working in the athletics department at Iowa State for a couple of years, I saw how hard athletes work, not only on the field but off the field to better themselves academically. So I personally, and, and yeah, you got me thinking now because, bro, this can you match yourself being a walk on? and trying to attend football and trying to get a school degree. Like, that's that's hard because his job is to, like, you know, play football and go to school. And it's just like, man, that's tough for a guy who's a walk-on and a guy who has a scholarship. Because that's, you know, it's just like, man, that's tough. You know, them paying out of pocket every semester. That's you got me thinking about it now harder now, you know? It's definitely not. I don't know. I, I get back to you. If I, if I if something comes up to me, I get back to you on that one. Yeah, it's definitely not going away. Um, I, I just, I'm pro making sure that the athlete is taken care of um, on and off the field. I, I mean, don't don't get it twisted. Like you, like certain, we still get paid, like, you know, to pay for our housing right. and, you know, get meals. Like, you know what I mean? We get meals in the morning and we get the food and stuff like that. But it's just like the jersey, you know, the picture taking, the signing, the, that type of time, you know. I, you know, I can, I don't know. I had to go back and still think a little bit more about that. Fair enough. Um, what, some fun questions. But ask H, I'm, real quick, if you was an athlete, would you want to get paid? Absolutely. I think for, I think for like the science. <laughs> give me a dollar. Give me, give me a dollar. How much, how much would you want to get paid? So like, what, every two weeks, every if month? You through, if you go through, I don't know. Um, I think it's, I saw something on like social media influencers. I was, there's a website, I can't think of the name. Jared Stansbury, a cyclone fanatic, wrote an article on just the top, like Iowa State currently, uh, based on Twitter followers, the top athletes at Iowa State. I know David Carr, uh, the Big 12 wrestler of the year, uh, has like, I don't know how, I forgot how many tens of thousands of followers he has. But it's social media influencers get paid like, I think it's between two hundred and seventy-five and five hundred dollars mm-hmm. a tweet, uh, based mm-hmm. on the react the amount of ge- flow like so reactions generated based on that tweet. So I think that is something that I I don't make those. Pre- I you know that's just based on research. It's between two hundred and seventy-five and five hundred dollars a tweets for social media influencers. So you're saying on the social media like standpoint, you're saying like for your for you, you got a lot of followers and like. Based okay. on revenue and how many, how how much? Uh, Would you charge people to take a picture with you? Absolutely. Uh, ah, that's a good one. You make a great. You know? point, man. That is a really. I'm, good I'm, you see, what I'm saying. So like, that's sometimes you some like this. This like when you go to a job, like your first job is not going to be the best. Yep. So sometimes you have to work. What, however many years, one, two, three, four. You know, you great athlete. You do two years. You you go. If you do four, that's a little bit more time, a little bit more injuries on the body. I get that. But sometimes you need to work for your job, you know? And so, like, you about to get paid. So when you're a first-rounder, second-rounder, you look back, that's what you got paid for. So, like, I love money. Don't get me wrong, but, like, I don't let it, like, run me. You know what I'm saying? So, like, at the end of the day, I just want to put a smile on people's face. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, how you doing? And that's it. So, like, I don't need to get paid to, for a signature. Like, you know what I mean? Like, my time is, I get it. You know, it's my time. But at the same time, as long as you're not coming into my house and, you know, pulling up to the house or being very disrespectful or just, you know, that, that boundary in life that you need to have. You make, you make, I, I just, you know, I just don't feel like sometimes it's, it's just, we get, we get paid as it is, but I just, I don't know. You know, you, you, you're a kid. I think the slope, <laughs> slope comes in because at some point it's become like a farm system and we can't deny that uh, to a certain degree. The slippery slope becomes in to in, in the arrow area where are we having agents? Are we not having agents? Then is it professional? Is it not professional? And it's become, there is, I, I do I do agree. It's a very slippery slope and I do- It's, it's, it's difficult. I do 110% agree with 
if a, if a fan wants to uh, have a, a picture or an autograph, I, you know, how can you charge someone that care that spent a hundred bucks on a ticket? Supporting you, like supporting you from day one, like you know, all those cold games, cheering your name. So that's that's hard for me to say. Let me get his signature and let me get money for that. You know, that's just like what? Like you know, it just get yeah. Put yourself as a kid. And, like, you look up to somebody and be like, oh, wow, and he's trying to charge me for a signature, bro? What is this? You know? It's just, like, the video game, I can understand. That's a good idea. If you're on a video